All right, fifth graders, welcome to Science Workshop. We are going to be investigating evaporation today. I'm really excited because there's some experiments that you are going to be able to conduct both online and in your house. All right, let's get started. So um, the first activity that you're going to be doing is exploring water vapor in a sim. This is um, an app that you are going to have a chance to use and explore. So before we get started, um, I want you to think about what you know about how raindrops form. Maybe what you figured out so far and your own knowledge about how raindrops form. Um, and keep that in mind while you do this activity. All right, so here's our question. Where does water vapor in the air come from? That is our guiding question for this investigation. So um, in order to do this investigation, you're going to use a sim, um, this app that's going to be online, to explore where the water vapor comes from. And so um, when you go to use this sim, you're going to see it looks like this. Um, and I want you to remember that water molecules in water vapor are shown in pink here in the sim. You sort of see them over here. Okay, so you are going to have um, in your Google Doc um, sort of the directions for how to um, do the sim. Okay, and then afterwards you're going to, have to answer some of these questions. Um, and so the sim is going to help you to investigate where water vapor in the air comes from. Um, and then of course those questions below. Okay, how do I use the Earth System Sim? I'm glad you asked. So in the assignment there is a link to log on to the apps for Amplify Science. Um, you are going to, uh, when you click on that link, go to the third option, which is log in with Amplify, you're going to see, and then you're going to use the username and password that's been provided to log in. Once you log in, you're going to go to step two, you're going to scroll down to the Earth System unit and click on that, and then you are going to click on this orange box with the one to get on the SIM. All right. Once you've done that, um, I want to make sure that you're focusing on water vapor as you investigate the sim. Observe the water molecules and track the path of one water vapor molecule. Um, and then you're going to go and record your answers to the questions in the Google Doc. All right, you're going to pause this video for now and go ahead and off and do that work. And then when you're done, you can come back um, to this moment and we're going to move on with the science lesson. Okay, if you're at this point in the science lesson, you should have um, done some observations about the water path um, the, the path of the water vapor in the sim. So I'm interested to know what you observed about the path of the water vapor in the sim. When you had a chance to click, what did you notice on those yellow lines? Um, that's going to be very interesting um, because we're going to use that information um, as we move forward. All right, activity two. Um, I have a little demonstration I'm going to show you um, about water vapor. So here I have an experiment. Um, that I've set up to test whether water vapor comes from liquid water. So I have two uh, empty containers from the deli here that you notice. One is empty and the other one has water inside of it. And taped to the lid of each of these on the inside, not the outside, the, um, underneath each lid I've taped a piece of paper to each one of these containers. Okay, So I want you to think what um, the two, what, what do you think the two paper strips are going to look like? Now remember, they're not on top of these containers, they're on the underneath the inside. So they're inside the containers, they're just taped to the um, underneath the lid. So what do you think the two paper strips will look like? And here we go. Um, based on your prediction, what are you noticing about the two paper strips? So this one came from the container with no water. This is the underside of the lid, I don't know if you can notice. And this is the underside of the, of the container with water. What are you noticing about the two paper strips? Container with no water, the container with water. All right, so as you can see, the water condensed on the paper that was in the container with water. 
Um, remember that water condenses from water vapor, so the water on the paper strip came from the water vapor. Um, I didn't accidentally jo jostle the containers. This, uh, the lids never ever touch the water. Um, but if you'll notice for th with my container with water, um, it's wet, right? It's a little bit darker. So um, this is showing that the water condenses from water vapor. So the water um, on the paper strip came from that water vapor. So even though you can't see it, it's there in the air in that space between the paper and the water in that container. The water um, condensed and then it got the strip wet. So where do you think the water vapor in the container came from? Think about that. And then why do you think the paper in the container with water got wet, but the paper in the container without water did not? Hmm. Now, remember that water vapor exists in the air all around us, but there can be different amounts of water vapor in different places. So covering the container um, kept the water vapor from spreading out and mixing with the air around us. All right, that's why we covered the containers. All right. Next activity. Um, this is an activity you are going to be doing um, on your own at your home. Um, hopefully you're able to do this. If you're not able to do this, don't sweat it. Um, I know not everybody has um, supplies that they, they would need for this, but hopefully it is an activity that most of you will be able to do. All right. So um, you saw in the sim that the water vapor came from lakes and oceans and went into the air. We saw in the demonstration that water vapor came from even a small amount of liquid in the container, right? So do you think that any bodily of water, even one as small as a few drops, will change into water vapor? Hmm, no wonder. So we're going to observe a small amount of water to find out if it turns into water vapor. So this is the experiment that you're going to set up. You're going to need a pencil, and I do mean a pencil. This isn't going to work if you have a pen or a marker. You need a pencil for this. Um, you need a piece of colored paper. Um, any paper that you have that's not white is fine. It can even be a scrap of paper. It really doesn't matter. Although um, I would recommend if you have a smooth sheet of paper, this works a little bit better um, rather than like construction paper. Um, you need some salt, maybe three to four teaspoons of salt and two small cups of water. What I mean by small cups, I mean like, like a quarter a cup or a half cup. You don't need a lot, um, a really small amount of water. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to need to do is prepare the salt water. So in one of the cups, and you see I labeled mine here, um, you're gonna need um, like about a fourth of a cup of water, okay? And then you're gonna add teaspoons of salt one at a time and stir them up until they're dissolved. Um, and then, you know, you stir one teaspoon in, let it dissolve, and then just keep adding teaspoons of salt and stirring until no more salt can be dissolved. Um, you gotta use a spoon to stir the mixture really, really good. Um, and you're going to dissolve the water until it's saturated, meaning that there's no more salt that can be dissolved. There might be a little bit of salt that settles at the bottom of the cup, but it's mostly dissolved. And you'll notice like it looks different from like the other cup of water that I have here, which has no salt in it, right? It's a little cloudy, okay? That means I have really good salt water. Um, now, I have some droppers here um, that was provided in the kit, but you probably won't have this at your house. Um, to be able to use. So you can just use your finger for this. But take a minute to just um, uh, dip your finger in the container of water and practice trying to get drops of the same size to drip back into the cup. Um, because you want to try and get drips of the same size for the next um, part of the experiment. All right. Now you are going to, um, you, on your colored sheet of paper, um, draw two circles with a pencil and label them fresh water and salt water. So it looks kind of like this. Fresh water, salt water. Now you're going to notice that these are both the same size. Um, I would recommend using something small and round to trace around. You know, maybe a spice jar or the lid to a bottle. Um, two circles of the same size and make sure you label that. Okay. And right here, this is the directions for this work that you're going to be doing. Um, you're going to practice releasing the drops of water into the cup until you can make drops that are always the same size. Hopefully you did that already. And then you're going to carefully release three drops of fresh water into the fresh water circle. And then you are going to use maybe your other finger, if you don't have a, dro a dropper, because you don't want to contaminate them, okay? No mixing. Um, and you're going to drop three drops of the salt water into the salt water circle, okay? Once you've done that, okay, um, 
uh, you have three drops of fresh water, three drops of salt water, and they're not mixed together. Um, you are going to um, wait to do this work. Now, uh, hopefully before you actually began, you found a place to set down the paper where it's not going to be disturbed. No rolling it around. It's going to just stay there for at least 24 hours. Um, and then just make sure that you use a dropper um, or your finger to not release too much water. Remember three drops. All right. You're going to let this experiment to set overnight undisturbed and then you're going to be able to come back and check in with your investigation when it's done. All right. Um, and then you're going to discuss water vapor in the air. So where does water vapor in the air come from? That is our question that we're asking for ending this unit. And so based on this sim investigation, what do you predict will happen to your freshwater and saltwater drops? And why do you think so? Hmm.